Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I really appreciate having you here. Right, as you can see by the title, The Neglected Ones. Or not really, but definitely, definitely not being attended to as much as I would like. Because they're so heavy. And once they're in their place, I'm glad they're in their place. My Cymbidium here, I'm going to change it's set up as to location. It's a beautiful, beautiful orchid and it blooms so beautifully for me. It deserves better. I don't know what it is with cymbidiums. They're gorgeous and yet, at least in my case, I just seem to like, yeah, it'll be fine. It's got to have a little bit more TLC, a little bit more protection in where it lives as opposed to, yeah, it'll be fine out there in the Scorchio sun all day. And my fires. Oh, yeah, look at it. Now, leaf-wise, there's not much I can do. But I can certainly take care of the mealybugs. I'm going to try that again today because of the fact that I did make a mistake, I think, with the alcohol previously on the other growth. And today we're going to spot treat it. So that's what's happening with my fires. And then here's my Maasai Red. And it's got how many new growths coming? One, 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 two. Oh, I saw three. There it is. Number three is over here, poking out the back. So, Masai Red. Uh, Guatemalenses is not a neglected one, but it is now having a silicon soak for the first time. That is what all these candidates here are also going to get today because. Hold on, if you don't like to see nasty, fast forward, skip, close your eyes until I tell you so. Ew. Ick. Grossness. Oh, yes. This is what happens when they get a bit too big to be able to handle. In my case, I really struggle with working with these orchids and I have only one egg crate to carry them with. So it's a bit of a task, which I'm going to tackle today. I'm going to take you along for the ride. They're all going to get a silicon soak as well today. And then I'll discuss a few more things. So first of all, I got some scrubbing to do. Okay, you can open your eyes now. Here we go. <laughs> In case you wanted to skip the nasty, the ew, the ick and the yuck, that's a lot better. Now I'm going to chase a flush of just plain RO water through them. And then we're going to soak them with silicon for about an hour, an hour and a half. And I'm going to address while they're soaking the mealybugs on the fires and explain what I believe went wrong the last time. And let's see if I'm right or if something happens this time. As you may have guessed by now, if you've been on my channel for a little while, you know that I have three areas that I grow in, east, south, west, and a little dining room. Uh, based on the noise level in the background, I am on the east side, yes, because this is the only table that can hold the weight where I don't have to bend down and pick them up all the time. They can stay here with every process that I'm doing and I can stay above waist level. So let's get flushing. Alrighty, now everybody goes back in their pots.
Okay, so before we get to the fires, I'm going to fill everything up with silicon. Let's have a chit chat. So that was one 10 liter bucket and it's not full yet. So I just want to qualify something. These are not my regular setup pots that have a snug fit to the lid. You can see here's one and then I found an inner pot that kind of fit and matched. They don't belong together. So there is no snug fit, meaning I can't soak all the way to the top as I would normally do. So that will get filled up and then that, that'll be it, which is a shame, but it's the only thing I can think of in order to accommodate these large growing orchids. So I've already filled 10 liters in there. We need some more. Until it spills over that outer edge. Let's go with Masai Red. All right, Whew. I never expected Colmenara Masai Red to get this size or to need something of this magnitude. When I bought this orchid, the whole plant had three bulbs and they were smaller than this. I can't see an old leaf because they keep falling off because of my winter treatment or lack thereof. But let's just say half the bulb, half the size of the bulb here and then the length of this foliage. And I got three of those in a nine centimeter pot as you do. Oh, and the height, the height includes the spike. And then it turned out in to become beast mode. So these big bulbs here are the ones that I grew over the last two years. And I had seven spikes with this one this year. It was quite a beast. So last year I potted it up into this pot so that I wouldn't have to do it again. Unfortunately, Masai Red has to live outside all year round. So there's a lot of cold damage. It would prefer not to get down to my temperatures in the winter, but I have no other way of accommodating it. And maybe one day I'm gonna have to let this one go. Okay, Fios. So you see, I have switched things around on here on the table because they are very heavy and the last thing I need is that glass to break. So I've distributed the weight of the pots into the corners just to make a hundred percent sure I don't get overconfident and snap that glass. So let's have a look. It seems like every time I start talking other things are happening in the background. I am very very sorry. Thank you very very much for your patience. So this is the growth here that I showed in one of my updates, bits and bobs and surprises, where I had mealybugs and I did what I always do. I take my alcohol mix and spray at liberty and with no worries based on the fact that it's summer, it's breezy, it's lovely outside. I don't have to worry about rot. Well, maybe I judged it wrong but I burnt off quite a bit of the leaves, but you can see it's still growing. I managed not to destroy the growing tip inside. So for the next year, it's never gonna look pretty. My fires doesn't look pretty. I don't have the right conditions for it, unfortunately, but uh, I don't know. For the time being, I've got it. It's still with me and I'm gonna do the best I can. I do love the blooms though. However, we have another case, and that is why, you see, as much as I love my orchids and messing with them, when it's a weight factor, I have to admit that I'm quite limited in some and restricted in some movements. So that's why I call these neglected, even though they're not really, but they're not as, let's say, aggressively moved and addressed as I do with all the others. Based on my care with what I do with my orchids, these I consider neglected. But look at what's going on. Ugh, I think I 
There's a colony here. Look at this. Why? Probably, and again, I'm going to say, I'm just going to put it out there, because I haven't got the silicon treatment in right at the beginning of the year. So that's what we're going to take care of. And how are we going to take care of it? I'm going to spot treat this with alcohol and cotton bud. That's it. And then we'll see what happens. I'm going to make sure to spray away from the plant, but treat all the mealies. You know, I have a hard enough time accommodating the foliage, which is extremely sensitive to anything and everything. I really don't need a mealy problem on top of that to destroy what's growing now. Very, very annoying. And another thing is I really want to get on with taking care of this by just dousing it. But now I'm hesitant. Now it's like every day I have to double check and this guy wants to crawl away. He's trying. While we're at it, I'm going to take care of this leaf here. It's coming off anyway of its own accord. You can see the roots. This one's failed, but that's that's fine. Look at this fuzzy fires root going down in there. The leka is starting to rise. There's a lot, a lot of roots in this pot. Now, fires normally are not deciduous. But in my climate, in my conditions, unfortunately they are. So this is just now taking care of the inevitable cutting off some leaves in order to make sure I don't get any pests hiding where they're going to hide and perpetuate the problem. I almost had two spikes for the first time this year on this fires. And I love it. I do. I broke the pot. I broke the spike. I fixed the pot, gave it to the Cymbidium, and this one got priority and got a fixed pot. So it's not like I don't care or I'm, neg Oops. I'm, I'm, I'm neglecting it, but like I said, in comparison to what I do with my others, this one is definitely not getting as much attention and care. You see, lack of humidity, and you could say yes, and the wind, but not where it's standing. There is not that much destructive wind. This is lack of humidity. I went to an orchidarium once and I asked if they had a fires and the guy looked at me like no way and I'm like okay I didn't understand why he did that. Mm -hmm. Pretty blooms and gorgeous and terrestrial and all that. Ha! Ah, now I understand if the orchidarium wants to present everything perfect when it happens, they will not achieve that, even with their controlled climate here in southern Spain. So that's the fires taken care of. And let's see if that mealybug spot treatment takes care of the matter without damaging the leaves. I'll keep an eye on it and I'll keep you updated. So we're going to give them all an hour and then we're going to switch them out and put some fertilizer into their reservoirs and then we will be done with them and then I shall try to do better. Let's get these situated. We'll start with the easy one, the small one, 
the Guadalajara Manensis. Let's add a bit of fertilized water. The roots in this one are totally, totally established. I got this one a while ago from Beekman. It was pretty much, it had like, you know, the strands of roots that are sort of like, are they going to make it, are they not? It's a bifoliant. So I waited several months to see about some new root action before actually repotting it, something I don't do a lot. Normally I just go at it. Not with this one. And now she's cut down and lift her up. Amazing. And let's put her back where she belongs. And then we'll tackle the giants. I'm going to start with Fias because I need the egg crate for the Maasai Red. the pot there are like layered like sticking out jutty things that's where the pot the outer pot will sit this one sits on top of that so that is the level of my reservoir all right here we go one down two to go next up the Maasai Red. While she flushes out, egg crate, outer pot, fertilizer. And in she goes. And to put her in the place where she lives from now until next year, spring when she blooms, I use this egg crate and I don't even dare lift on the handles because I'm scared it will break. She's that heavy. So I lift her from below. Last but not least, the Cymbidium. Okay, she has got one, two, three, four new growths coming. I feel as though they're a bit stunted, to be honest, but I'm not surprised considering where she's living. She's protecting herself, but now she's going to live next to Cousin It, where I can control light and direct sun influx. So this is now 5 p.m. The whole thing took a little longer than I thought, had a few interruptions. But, uh, so 5 p.m. on my east-facing side is in full shade. And these are the hottest coming up six weeks that we're going to have. And normally she lived in full sun from 2 p.m. all the way until sundown. Which is not a good thing. I have low humidity. But back here, she'll have morning sun, and then sometimes I'll raise the umbrella just to protect this area a bit more that gets plenty of light, even with the umbrella up. But this way, she'll be more in shade than in direct sun. The leaf tips are not that big a concern to me anymore. They don't look nice. But on the other hand, these are gonna go on the 
oldest bulbs anyway one day they're just going to fall off my main interest right now is to get those new growths as established as possible and not stress them out so so early in their development thank you everybody so much for watching might not have been the most exciting of videos but if you've made it this far i really really appreciate that you did that you stuck with me and you're supporting the channel by watching the video all the way through it means a lot and i can't express it enough but it means a lot so everybody thank you very very much I really appreciate having you here and i hope everybody has a wonderful day take care bye